All right, objective for today, once again, I can solve two variable equations. Let's read it together. One, two, three. I can solve two variable equations. All right, so we already finished with expressions. We finished with one variable equations, and we saw that in multi-step, and we did a bunch of stuff with them all the way through uh, inequalities, the same thing, one variable. And today we're starting with two variable equations, okay? So the title for your notes should be two variable equations. Your objective, I can solve two variable equations. For these notes, you will need your prayer model. So make sure you get that box going on the right-hand side. Okay, so once again, our concept for today is two variable equations. Definition. Definition of two variable equations. Mathematical statements where two expressions are equal to each other and contain two unknown variables. Mathematical statements where two expressions are equal to each other and contain two unknown variables. Mathematical statements where two expressions are equal to each other and contain two unknown variables. So once again, the simple way of uh, reading those uh, that definition is two expressions equal to each other and that they contain two unknown variables. Okay, let me show you some examples. Examples. 3x plus 6 equals 3y. 12x equals 4y minus 8. Bless you. 12a plus 2b equals, I'm sorry, 2a plus 2b equals 14. Another example is negative 3n equals m minus 6. And the last example, y equals x squared minus 9. And if you notice here, I did include now the, the, the exponent of 2 on the variable, on one of them. Because uh, once we're done with, with uh, our linear equation, we're going to get into quadratics. And we just want to make sure that we uh, are looking at these from right now. And none example. Only three non-examples, x plus 2. Another non-example is 12 equals y minus 8. And another non-example is 2a greater than 14b. Copy that. All right. Pens down, please. Eyes up here. So, once again, according to the definition, the definition says, Statements where two expressions are equal to each other and contain two unknown variables. Let's see. Here's one expression, 3x plus 6. Here's another expression, 3y. Are they equal to one another? Yes. Are there two different types of variables? Yes. Look at this next one. 12x equals 4y minus 8. Expression, expression, are they equal to each other? Yes. Two different types of variables? Yes. Look at this one. 2a plus 2b equals to 14. 14 is a numerical expression. This is an algebraic. Do they have two different types of variables? Yes. And so on and so forth. Does everybody see that? Okay. I gave you some none examples. On the none examples, we have x plus 2, 12 equals y minus 8, and 2a greater than 14b. Each one of these three has something different that makes it not be an example. Think about it. What do you think? makes these three not be two variable equations. Think about it first. Each one of these has something different that makes them non-examples. Tell your neighbor what, what it is. What is it? One. So yes, once again, the, the two critical attributes about two variable equations is that they need to have equal signs and they need to have two unknown variables. Equal sign, two unknown variables equal sign to unknown variables. Once again, this is only an expression. This one is an equation, but it doesn't have two different variables. This one does have two, ver do two different variables, but it's an inequality symbol, an inequality. So far so good? All right, and let's write the steps down. And for steps, I'm only going to use two of them. We know all four of them to solve equations, don't we? Okay, tell you never the four steps that we usually use to solve equations. 
right? Simplify, isolate, plot, check. But today we're only going to use the first two, so write that down. Simplify each side of the equation. Start with grouping symbols and combining like terms. And step two, isolate the variable by using inverse operations. So once again, to remember our first steps, make sure you circle the word simplify. And the second word for the second step is isolate. All right, so we know our steps, simplify and isolate. We know what to do. We've been doing this. The only thing different from what we've been doing till today is that now we're going to be looking at formulas and equations that have more than one variable. So on the left side of your notes, on the Q side, on the Q side of your notes, I want you to write formula, formula. On the Q side? On the Q side. Formula, and I want you to write the definition. An equation that states a rule. An equation that states a rule. If you want to write the last part, you can put it in the parentheses. That's just so that uh, you can elaborate on it. It says for a relationship among quantities. But pretty much we already know that formulas are rules that they give us, right, to follow in order to find an answer to something or, or solve for a particular thing, okay? Now, check this out. The formula DRT, remember I gave you that at the beginning of the year? And you're, yeah, the DIRT formula. You're going to continue using this throughout the year, not only with me, but also in your science class. So, check this out. It says, in the formula D equals RT, D is isolated. What do we say the word isolate means? To leave by itself. Remember that? Is D left by itself? Yes. It's right there. However, check this out. What if I ask you to isolate for the letter T? Think about it. T needs to be left by itself. Everybody look up, please. What is next to T? And what is R doing? Multiplying. So what is the inverse? Divide by R and divide by R. You don't need to copy this. I'm just elaborating a little bit. So therefore, in order to solve for T, we're left with what? D over what? R, R equals T. Now do we have T isolated? Yes. So pretty much that's what we're going to be doing. I just wanted to give you a quick up. However, what did we use in order to isolate the variable? We use what? Inverse operations. Are we there? Okay, you don't need to copy this. You just needed to copy the formula definition. Next, also on the Q side, I want you to copy this next thing. Hold on. It says, a formula is a type of literal equation. So you're saying, what is that, Mr. Q? Well, in blue, on the Q side, I want you to write literal equation. Tell your neighbor what you're going to write on the Q side. Okay. So the only thing you're going to write is literal equation and the definition which says an equation with two or more variables. An equation with two or more variables. Example. Now check this out. Look at this formula that they gave us. D equals R times T. Does that have more than two variables? Yeah. So therefore, a literal equation could be a formula. D e equals RT. Let's see. Think about the, uh, the formula to find the area of a rectangle. Think about it. The formula to find the area of a rectangle. Area, I think it's, uh, let's see if I remember correctly. Area equals base times height. Oops. Base times height. Okay. Does that have more than two variables? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, therefore, this is a formula, but it's also a what? Literal equation. Everybody got it? Yes. 
Very good. This is a formula for the rectangle. For the, for the triangle, we need to divide by 2. At the end of the triangle, we divide by 2. Okay? So, so far so good? Let me give you a third one and a third example of a literal equation. I'm going to see a formula. Who remembers the, uh, uh, the circumference of a circle? The circumference of a circle is C equals diameter times pi. Is that three different types of variables? Or more than two variables? Yes. So it's a formula, but it's also a what? Literal equation. Are we there? Okay. So far, so good? All right. So those are the two types, uh, I mean, the type of formulas and the type of two variable equations that we're going to be looking at right now. In this case, these have more than two variables. So, like I said and promised, today we're going to start with two variable equations. However, we're only going to focus on solving for a particular variable. So I want you to copy the next example, please. Example one. A, solve x plus y equals 15 for x. And then you're going to skip two lines, and then you write B, solve PQ equals x for Q. Okay. Yeah, write them down, and then I'm going to solve them. I'm, I'm going to solve the first one. I just need to copy that down. Too. Okay, here you go. Writing utensils down. Eyes up here. So let's look at example 1A. Everybody look, eyes on the screen, please. It says, bless you, x plus y equals 15, bless you. And they want us to solve for which variable? Guys, everybody look up, please. Focus for x, right? Which means we need to isolate x or we need to leave x by itself. What's next to x? Y. Plus y. So what is the inverse of plus y? Subtract y, subtract y. These these cancels, we're left with x equals. Can we combine these two? No, so I just write negative y, and this is a positive 15, and I'm done. Copy that, please. All right, so what do we use inverse operations? So now, let's go to the second one. Let's do the second one together. It says solve for Q. So let's look where Q is at. It's right here. We need to leave Q by itself. What's next to it? P. And what is P doing? Divide. It's multiplying. So what is the inverse? Divide by P. Divide by P. So P over P, that's 1. 1 times Q, that's Q. Equals. And what do we have over here? X over P. And we're done. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So far, so good? All right, copy this next one and see if you can do the next one by yourself. Here we go. Okay, example two, copy this down. Solve 5 minus B equals 2T, and they want you to solve for T. Copy that and do that by yourself. See what you get. Okay, so let's see. If we are to solve for t, where's t at? Right here. What's next to t? The 2 and it's multiplying. So the inverse is to divide by 2. Divide by 2. So 2 over 2, that's 1. 1 times t, that's t. And we're left with... 5 minus B over 2. And we're done. Now, if you were to simplify this a little bit more, if you did that extra step, that's also correct. What is 5 divided by 2? 2.5 minus B over 2. We can leave that as B over 2 equals T. This is also correct. You got any of these two? That is correct. Okay. No. All right. So with that said, so far so good. Let me give you one more for you to practice. Do this one again by yourself. Copy this. Example three. Example three. Solve D equals M over V. 
And here they ask us to solve for V. Solve for V. See if you can uh, do that one. Okay, here we go. So we're supposed to solve for V. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rewrite it so you can so you can see the entire process. Everybody look up, please. However, here isn't V the one that's dividing? Yes. Yeah, yes. So therefore, how can we get rid of? We we need to multiply. So here we're gonna multiply times V. Multiply times V. So we're left with V D equals, what is V over V? That's 1, and we're left with M. Now, at this point, to leave the V by itself, what do we do? Divide by D, divide by D. We're left with V equals M over D. Yeah. Okay, example four. It says, the formula for the area of a triangle is A equals one-half times base times height, where B is the length of the base and H is the height. Here they ask us to solve for H. So you wrote your formula. Here it is, A equals one-half B times H, and they want us to solve for H. Let's do this one together. Here we go. So first of all, in order to solve for H, which is this one right here, we need to get rid of all this. Let me first get rid of this fraction. Okay. Multiply times the reciprocal. Who remembers that? The reciprocal becomes 2 over 1. If we multiply times 2 over 1, this becomes a what? A 1. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side, 2 over 1. So we're left with, what is 2a over 1? 2a. And we're left with, we're left with, sorry, hold on, let me rewrite this. We're left with b h. Now, we need, still need to leave the b by itself. I mean the, the h, I'm sorry. They want us to solve for h. What do we need to do? Get rid of the b. What is the b doing? It's multiplying. So what is the inverse? Divide by B, divide by B. B over B is 1. 1 times H is H. And we're left with 2A over B. And we're done. Okay? Example 4. Now let's copy example 5. Copy this one. Example 5. It says, solve the formula for a person's typing speed for E. Which variable do they want us to solve for? E. e. Okay, so copy this one. S equals W minus 10E over M. S equals W minus 10E over M. Okay? So let's see. Check this out. Work this one together. Now, you're saying, I don't know where to start. Well, check this out. What if I was to not have this part? Do you know what to do with this? Yes. Which means, then what? We need to get rid of this bottom part, don't we? So what is the M doing? It's dividing, so we need to multiply times M both sides. Multiply times M. So M over M becomes 1. And we're left with? W minus 10E equals M times S. And they still want us to solve for which variable? E, which means we need to get rid of whatever's next to it. So we, let's get rid of this W. What We have a positive W. What is the inverse? Subtract W. Subtract W. We're left with MS minus what? W equals negative 10E. Is is E already isolated? No. No, what's next to it? What is the negative 10 doing? Multiplying. So what is the inverse? 
divide by negative 10. Divide by negative 10. We're left with E equals, let's see, MS minus W over negative 10. And we're done. Did we solve for E? Yes. Okay. So for homework, homework, homework is on, on page what? 111 to 112, numbers 1 through 35 odd. Okay, guys, so once again, this is for homework for tonight. Those of you that did not bring the homework that was left for the Thanksgiving break, you need to bring it tomorrow. Okay, have a good one, guys. Enjoy your homework. See you guys tomorrow.